more done when I'm procrastinating than any other time. And I know that sounds really nuts, but let me just explain. And look, Sloan has the hiccups. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> Do you still have the hiccups? Oh, I was about to have to scare them out of him. <laughs> anyway, procrastination. I'm the like queen of procrastination. That'll shock some people because I'm like super productive and I've always, you know, got things going on and I'm always in the middle of stuff. But I'm actually getting the majority of those things done while I'm procrastinating on other projects. This video vlog, for example, I started that last week while I was um, supposed to be, according to my own personal schedule, working on um, my next digital guide. <laughs> so, but I was like, eh, you know, I think I'm digging and do this whole other project. And there's something about that that's kind of funny, actually. Like, I've accomplished more stuff in my life procrastinating on other things than anything else, which is, is really nuts when I think about it. It really boils down to being overwhelmed. But the funny thing is, is the big project that I might be overwhelmed with, I replace with or distract myself with an equally big project, an equally overwhelming project, and just manage to like get it done. It's kind of interesting and I was, you know, thinking about this guide that, that I'm in the process of doing and I've got tons of work done on it already, but I'm kind of at that critical point where it's time to sit down and do some serious focus. I was thinking to myself, I'm going to have to come up with a bigger project, a more overwhelming project, and that will make me procrastinate on that and sit down and work on this, right? <laughs> yeah, makes a lot of sense. The project I'm working on is um, a guide called Easy Unique Content, and I'm really excited about this project. The page is up now at easyuniquecontent.com. There's nothing really there except a notification list if you want to know when it's coming out. But content is something I've always been really good at. I've been working online now um, and at home for 15 years, and I've been blogging for over eight years. So between um, interviews and blogging and social media and podcast and email and every other place that I put out content, I'm constantly rolling it out. And people think, oh my gosh, are you just like a natural born writer or just a content creation machine? Or what is your trick? What's the magic? And there is no magic really. I just have these set of resources and this set of strategies that I use that have worked for me consistently over the years. So it's not just um, about what to write and it's not just about you know where to write it, but it's about where to publish it and why, how to optimize it for traffic, how to pull it all together, specifically to drive traffic and even more specifically for conversions. Because you have to, you have to really have to meet your market, you have to engage with your market, you have to gain their trust and respect, you have to, you know, interest them or whatever, and then you have to kind of lead them, I'm getting a lot of distractions here, anyway, you have to kind of lead them, you know, to and through the buy process. Whether you're selling your own products or whether you're promoting products as an affiliate or whether you're trying to get traffic for your sponsors or your advertisers, whatever your model is, content marketing is really the big thing. It's incredibly important for me to put this guide out because it's something I think a lot of people can use. It's something that people are going to need now more than ever because while content's always been important, Right now, it is you know, absolute, ultimate importance in online marketing of any kind. It doesn't matter if you're a local dentist, it doesn't matter if you're a blogger or an affiliate marketer or <laughs> what, what exactly. This lap dog is huge. Anyway, so like I said, knowing you know, how I am with procrastination and knowing how insanely productive I am when I'm procrastinating on something, I decided that I'm going to rearrange and reorganize and paint my entire house. Not going to happen. So instead, I think I will sit down and work on this. <laughs> So that's me, and now that I've finally learned uh, the psychology behind my in insane procrastination issues, I think I got it figured out. So I have everything laid out in front of me, and I have to tell you that this is much more exciting than rearranging furniture or reorganizing my entire house. Like, that's totally overwhelming. Here I go, I've already got like, you know, 60 pieces of content. I've just got to organize it and edit it and put it all together here so I can get this guide out for you guys, which will be tons of fun. So in the meantime, um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and your issues. <laughs> hey, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and your issues on procrastination. How do you deal with it? Why do you think you procrastinate? And 
Are you gonna sit on the arm of the chair now? That's really cute, dear. <laughs> I'm just curious to hear how you deal with procrastination. What causes it? What are your tricks? Like, how do you get over the hump and get past it? Now that I've figured out how insanely productive I am when I do, you know, want to procrastinate on something, uh, I think I'm going to use that to my advantage. Another good example is um, Zumba. I love to do Zumba. But I don't really like to exercise. I mean, pff, that's kind of crazy. Who likes to exercise? But if, if I don't want to do email, then Zumba is a much better option. <laughs> so... <laughs> I say, you know, when you're trying to avoid doing one thing, find something else to do that's more enjoyable or less hideous to uh, procrastinate. And then you just get like 100 times more stuff done. Anyway, it's working for me. So I am actually going to get to work on this because there is no way in the world that I'm going to like dig into the house stuff. <laughs> See ya.